So, um, welcome. Thank you for attending, all of you. And uh, thank, thank you, Bob Graham, for hosting this. Bob Graham of Wave, Wavepoint. You'll be hearing um, this presentation will probably take about 30 minutes, and um, you're welcome to you're welcome during the presentation to type in uh, questions you have. We'll try and um, inject those into the into the uh, into our feedback. So type them in that uh, text box. Uh, after the presentation, we'll take the mute button off, and you're welcome to uh, ask questions verbally of any of us. Um, Again, as I said, it'll take about 30 minutes. Um, there could be uh, 10 to 15 minutes questions. We'll be giving you or giving you access to, uh, I think probably tomorrow, by tomorrow, some white papers. You'll have access to a recording of this uh, presentation and you'll have access to the slides. And we will be sending you an online survey. Um, I think that's about it to get going. Bob, uh, oh, uh, I'm Bob McBean. I'm from um, Preston Willis Group, and you'll be hearing from me just after you hear from Bob Graham of Waypoint. Bob, do you want to start? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good, Thanks. Michael. Thanks for that first slide. Um, so most of you who are attending um, got an invitation from Waypoint. Uh, you're in our uh, large proprietary worldwide database of technology companies. Um, uh, some of you, the names I actually recognize, who've actually had a, a talk in the past. Uh, we're a uh, full-service technology M&A firm. Uh, the reason we're working with Preston Willis Group is uh, perhaps obvious, but it's, uh, it comes back to this um, issue of um, when we take on a new client to sell the client in the marketplace, we often find that the client isn't prepared to be sold to maximize their value. And so the idea of working with Preston Willis Group is to say, um, uh, looking at what they're going to say just after myself, you can actually dramatically improve your value uh, by using their process, which gets into benchmarking yourself versus your peers, and uh, so on and so forth, improving what you're not doing very well at, uh, accelerating what you're doing well at, and then when you do get ready for sale, uh, the logic would be uh, if Waypoint can help you do that uh, uh, exit, uh, we'd be delighted to do so. So again, we're a full-service uh, technology M&A firm. You got an invitation from us because you're in our database. If you look at our website, you'll see our sell-side clients, our buy-side clients. We sell patents, all to do with information technology. So we engage with some of the largest companies in the world um, uh, when we're um, uh, selling our companies, uh, our clients who are software companies. And I'm going to talk a bit about uh, how we go through that and valuations in a second. Um, but but the, the purpose of this first slide is to just refresh yourself with Waypoint, introduce you to PWG, and they're going to talk further in a second, and plant the seed of a little bit of preparation could have a tremendous yield when the time to exit down the road uh, comes. Uh, next slide, uh, Michael, please. So uh, we're, we often talk to um, uh, buyers. Uh, I have one coming up at uh, 4 o'clock today with one of my clients presenting. And wh what are they looking for? Well, there's, there's four pillars to the, to the bar stool, if you will. Uh, they're looking for good people. So very seldom does a company buy a company and not want to keep all of the people. And the key reason for that is subject matter expertise uh, within the sector. So if it's a, uh, a large company in, uh, say, mobile enablement, uh, buying a smaller company in mobile enablement, they clearly want to keep all of the people. Subject matter expertise, very important. Uh, management team, very important. Technical skills, important, but not as important as subject matter expertise. They're also looking to acquire good clients. So if you're selling and you've got an international footprint, you've got very good clients all on uh, contracts, uh, paying good money for your software, or more importantly, paying good money for the support of your software and the new releases, uh, that's excellent. Um, good technology. Um, more and more, and you know this, um, um, uh, cloud is no longer just a trend and a, and a uh, flavor of the month. Uh, it's becoming mainstream. So we actually have buyers who say, don't send us a client for sale, Bob, unless it's cloud enabled. Uh, we don't want any more old licensed stuff. Uh, number two, your, your technology should be current and modern as opposed to, you know, Visual Basic or something that uh, we can remember from 10, 20 years ago. Um, 
and more importantly, should go, do good stuff and, and frankly have some ideally some secret sauce that gives you a competitive advantage from a technology point of view. Uh, if that technology is protected by patents, that's fantastic. Uh, and we do have some clients. We have uh, one right now that has three clients uh, as we're selling the company. That's wonderful. Uh, good financials. Uh, you can't get away from the fact that ultimately, especially a public company buying a small private company, ultimately you've got to have good financials. Now, good financials doesn't necessarily mean you have to have 80% EBITDA or fellow I spoke to yesterday told me he had 85% recurring revenue of his total revenue. Well, wow, that's fantastic. But just good financials, like growing at 15 to 20%, 10%, 15% EBITDA, uh, no, no uh, tremendous valleys in the past, like up, down, up, down. And of course, recurring revenue is the, is the one thing that everybody thinks is uh, uh, gold, if not platinum. So that's what buyers are looking for. So Back to our seminar today with Preston Willis Group, their um, core value technology, which is being honed for the software sector, and that's why we're working together, allows you, in effect, to go through their process and concentrating on these four pillars plus some other benchmark data in your sector that will allow you to be positioned in, our, in such a way that you're in the top quartile uh, when it, when it uh, uh, comes time to exit. Okay, next slide, Michael. So now I'm going to give you some uh, um, uh, valuation feedback because ultimately this gets into uh, if you proceed to work with Preston Willis Group, and I hope you do, at the end of the day, uh, they're going to be striving very hard to work with you to improve your valuation, which is what the buyers are going to pay. So I'm going to give you now some feed on the street feedback. I just did one this morning, negotiations, because we negotiate all the time on behalf of our clients. Some general <laughs> car software valuations. Now, I'm just going to say from the beginning, this is not specific to, obviously, any of you. Uh, this is very general street stuff. Um, this does not take into a fact that I think um, Google just bought a company for $3.2 billion that's going to uh, allow your cell phone to uh, control your thermostat. Uh, I'd say for $3.2 billion, I probably could have written that up, but anyway. Uh, so it, it doesn't include those off-the-chart valuations. So this is kind of the regular 80-90% of all transactions. So we're just going to, to keep it simple, and this would apply, by the way, to, to any, quote, normal, regular software company, I would say under twenty million, under $10 million in private, not uh, public and not large. But let's keep $1 million just so I can do the math in my mind uh, quickly. So we take a million dollars annually, a multiple of revenue. We start, we advise all of our clients, we're going to go out and try and get you 1.5 times revenue. So you're a million dollar company, we're going to get you money 1.5. <coughs> now, that's assuming average metrics. Now, so I, I've just reiterated some average metrics, but it's the good people, the good clients, the good technology, and the good financials. So this doesn't mean, um, uh, so that's just a street price based on if things are pretty good and you, you know, you're at a cocktail party, what do you do? And you can say, hey, i got a company, and boy, it's pretty good. Now, and this is a key tie into Preston Willis Group. Now, if you've got significant value enhancers, your price goes up. Your price can go up dramatically. Now, what are some value enhancers? Well, you're cloud enabled. All of your clients have converted from license to cloud, and you've got monthly revenue coming in that you can take to the bank. Um, you've got some significant competitive advantage. You're in a sector where you're actually gaining traction. The sector isn't shrinking. Uh, or it isn't so crowded that everybody's discounting. Uh, you've got revenue per employee. I was chatting with someone the other day. The revenue per employee is almost $250,000 per employee. Well, in the software industry, if you can get to a number like 200, I use $150,000 per full-time equivalent uh, as a pretty good number. If you can get over that, uh, that's a value enhancer. So if you're international, uh, that's a value enhancer. A lot of buyers, uh, we're negotiating now for some of our clients in Germany and the UK, Australia, etc. So international is uh, very important. It also shows that your product it, it, it isn't just good for the USA. Um, so international is one. Now, what are some value detractors? Well, let's say, uh, for example, just chatting with someone the other day, <laughs> their revenue dropped from 2.25 to 1.79 in one year. 
uh, uh, ouch, boy, what happened there? Um, uh, talk to clients who were uh, uh, converting from license to cloud, and it's costing them uh, twice what they estimated, twice as long as they estimated, and they still don't have a product out, so their customers are upset. So uh, those would be examples of value detractors. No profitability, great promise, but no profitability. That's today in today's world, post 2008. That's that's a major <coughs> value detractor. And I'd say if you're not growing, if you're growing at 10%, that's frankly just not good enough to keep your uh, your business viable go, going on. I could list the value enhancers as many. I could list the value detractors as many. But I think that gives you a, an idea. So I'm going to turn it back now to Preston Willis Group. And the logic here, again, is the reason we're working together is uh, we can be kind of a tag team with you so that they would work with you as a next step to uh, take you through and prove your marketability, uh, your sustainability, your profitability, also that you're going to get top quartile pricing. And then if you choose Wavepoint to be your M&A agent, we'd be delighted. And a couple of years down the road, we'll take you to market. And as the expression goes, everybody will be delighted. Um, I'm going to turn it back now to the other Bob. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bob. This is Bob McBean speaking. Thanks very much, Bob. As usual, enlightening. And Bob, I think you said that you have to uh, leave for a personal thing shortly. So if there are any questions for Bob Graham at the end, we'll record them, or you can email uh, one of us, and we'll get back to you. Uh, yeah. If there's any questions in particular for Bob Graham. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks again. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Um, Okay, just a little background on uh, on the Preston Willis Group. Uh, it does many things, but basically you can boil it down to, to, into two major categories. Um, sales enhancement, uh, different ways, whether it's geographic expansion, new market entry, um, channel enhancement, et cetera, et cetera, anything to do with top line. That's that's one whole set of skill. That's one whole skill skill set. The other is really enterprise value, improving the enterprise value for a lot of reasons, and that's the focus of this particular seminar. <clears throat> and that's what this slide says generally. Uh, Mike, can you flip over to the next one? Thanks very much. So um, many of you, I'm sure, have developed metrics for managing your, your business effectively. But uh, you may not have developed metrics for maximizing the enterprise value. And that's what we're going to talk about um, over the next couple of minutes here. Next slide, Mike. Now, enterprise value is a yardstick by which um, you as operators or owners, uh, hired guns, et cetera, et cetera, can understand, manage, and monitor the intangible drivers. We're going to talk about what those drivers are behind your business and its ability to perform and be sustained. Um, next slide, Mike. I think the key point, uh, key points here on this slide are uh, why you might want to enhance the value of your of, of your business. Like uh, people could say, "Well, ho hum, I'm busy doing what I'm doing. I'm making a good living." Well, here's here's a few reasons. One, you may be you may be doing a roll up. You may be doing acquiring companies, and you may be acquiring them or doing a roll up using your stock as a um, as a as a currency. Well, if that's the case, you'd want your stock to be worth um, as much as it could be. That's that's one point. Two, you could be uh, you could be a seller. So of course, you want your business to um, be worth as much as it can. Uh, you could just be building your business or renovating your your, your business, and those are these are issues, you, and you'll see them in a moment. But I think you'll you'll agree that um, they're all good metrics for building your business, um, especially uh, especially if you're doing this as a team. This software that we're going to talk about that that. That will that will help you. This is a software enhanced service. is is really good. Like if you're doing this on your own, you may not need all that. Oops. Um, anyways, that's uh, you just slip to the next slide. But anyway, there are many many reasons for um, wanting to enhance your your value. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> and um, the last two, merging. Well, if you're going to merge with somebody, you want your relative value to be bigger than their relative value. And uh, of course, if you're seeking investment capital for growth, you don't have to be a seller. You could just be seeking investment capital. You you might want to minimize the dilution. So those are all reasonably good reasons for uh, watching, enhancing, or doing something about enterprise value. Um, 
next slide, Michael. I think we'll skip the next slide and go to the one that starts 90 minutes. Yeah, that's the one. Thanks. Um, so within about 90 minutes and using the using the software and our services, within about 90 minutes, you're going to get a pretty good feel for what we call your transferable enterprise value is today, what its potential could be, and what the value gap is. Uh, usually the value gap is measured in hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars depending on the size of the firm but it's typically not like fifteen dollars or a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars it's hundreds of thousands typically you'll be given uh, after that 90 minutes again this is just an, this is an overview the red red flags what should you what should you focus on and a roadmap on how to improve that value generally next slide Michael um, the software that we're going to talk about was developed at M M MIT over a, over a decade, working with, uh, with industry, working with VCs, working with uh, private equity firms, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we boiled the value drivers down to the 18 universal value drivers. Uh, you could call them different things, and you'll see what they are. Each of them have a, uh, uh, an elaborate question set, and at the... Uh, which I'm going to go through, some of which I'm going to go through you, but anyways, there's 18 value drivers, half of them internal, half of them external. Next slide, Michael. Uh, to begin with, during this first 90 minutes that I talk about, we'll go through um, one question for each one of those value drivers, and you can see it's multiple choice. It's quite easy. If you're dealing one-on-one -on -one with the, let's say, the hired gun, the owner, the business, et cetera, et cetera, it usually goes a little faster. If you're dealing with a team, the uh, CEO, the CEO, and his or her team, it usually goes a bit slower because there, this generates a lot of this, a lot of discussion about what the answer should be, where should you be. You'll see the answers in the bottom right there of that of that screen, um, which is always always a healthy uh, always a healthy thing to do. So we go through each one of those value drivers, come up with uh, pick one question for each one of them, and next slide, Michael. And uh, you'll get a chart that looks something like this. Now, this isn't the 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 end answer. It's just giving you an overview, it, and it's based on your industry because part of what you plug in is is to tell the system what industry you're uh, in. Uh, <clears throat> this is an extensive database that's updated every six months. So this is these these are pretty good stats. So it'll tell you what the range of value, EBITDA multiple values are for for your business. Bottom bottom left. Um, the, the categories, of course. Uh, top top right, you'll get um, the top right is not a, a value; it's a score, uh, a, a core what we call a core value score. So there's the overall score. There's the operational the, the operational drivers. That's half of them. That score and market drivers. That's half of them and that score. And then what the average is. This company's not doing that badly. 74, 74 out of 100. And then the bottom right talks about the actual dollar value of, of where where you are what your current estimated value is based on these based on the 90 minutes and what the value could be if you did something about the, each one of those value drivers which we're going to look at in a moment next slide Michael um, actually you know what this is um, we'll just skip the slide this is better better portrayed in another another um, area yeah we'll look at this one uh, first of all I have to remind you don't connect the values on each one of these slides because we pick different different companies so you might say oh that they got a rating of 74 this one's got a rating of 45 what the hell happened whatever so they're just different companies uh, that's that's why they look different just trying to give you a feel for their all, all over the map this would be actually a more typical company um, uh, to be to be honest so you'll see the core value rating again those three: the overall score, operational, market, uh, market drivers. On the top, in the top left, <clears throat> you'll see the um, you'll see that same the same score reflected in a graph in the bottom bottom left. You'll see the um, market the market drivers and each how each one of them contributed to that overall core rating score. The market drivers and the operational drivers. <clears throat> And we're going to, on the next slide, we're going to see how that tr translates into value. Next slide, Michael. 
Uh, you'll see in the top um, in the top left, you'll see the the overall stats for your for your uh, business. Um, you know, annual revenue, profit, um, the potential value, the value gap, et cetera, et cetera. In the in the middle, it's portrayed graphically what your value is currently and what the value could be. Uh, top right, uh, you'll see the core value rating, and the um, bottom bottom left, you'll see uh, this is a nice stat. You'll see, and this uh, this uh, this graph is actually produced after what we call the level two assessment. I should have said that. So after the 90 minutes, if you want to take it further, there's actually about 240 odd questions that you go through, spread out over those 18 value drivers. So after you go through level two, you're going to get a more uh, robust picture of your of your company and get um, the um, the certainty of the results have, have improved dramatically uh, at that point. You're pretty certain that this really is what it is and what the value is. So uh, the bottom left again is your um, is the progress from when you started. So you'll always get a you'll always you'll always know how much you've done since you started two months ago or a year ago or something like that. What you've done since the beginning. Uh, that's always a good thing. And the bottom middle um, box. Is the value graph? These are some of the critical drivers. They're not all the drivers. We're going to look at those in a moment. These are some of the critical ones that could contribute the most. And the bottom right, the red flags, are some of the items that um, some of the more important items that should be dealt with in terms of tasks. And of course, you can drill down at each one of those. It doesn't, it's not just sort of roles and responsibilities. Well, what does that mean exactly? We would tell you what that means exactly. Next slide, Michael. This portrays all of the 18 uh, value drivers, and it portrays them, and it will be different for each company, of course. Uh, the order in which they're displayed will be different, but it's it this this tells you what each market, uh, what each value driver will contribute to the value gap, improving the value gap of your 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 company. You can see in this particular one, sales and marketing, and again, we don't just tell you sales and marketing. There, there's a lot. Um, there are maybe. 10 to 15 tasks that go behind that uh, that would give you hints of what you should be doing in your particular case. So it's not just giving you this this list. But if you were in a if you're in a big hurry to increase your value, you'd you'd probably go from top to bottom. If you were if you could take your time, you'd probably pick the ones that uh, you're more familiar with, that you think are easier, whatever, less expensive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You might pick off those those first and do that. So it depends on where you are and how fast you want to get there. Uh, next slide, Michael. And um, as I said before, behind each one of these value drivers, when you've when you've done a level done the level two assessment, there are many tasks to each one of those each one of those value drivers, depending on where you are and uh, on, on the on the value chart. This is really telling you some of the tasks that you might do and what the bang for the buck is. So you can see the in the bottom the, the bottom part the bottom over to the right hand side the value gap <clears throat> for doing um, each one of these things, but if it's got one firecracker, that's not much bang for the buck. If it's got three, that's a lot of bang for the buck. That means what it's going to cost you versus what you're going to get in in return for that. The the more firecrackers, the better. So you might want to focus on those. You might want to say, you know what, I want to minimize the amount of money I'm going to spend, but I want to increase my value. So I'm going to pick the highest bang for the buck ones first. I'm going to do those. Um, that's that's fair game. And um, in uh, next slide, Michael. And in terms of um, let's say um, moving the uh, Moving or improving the value gap, uh, the system does require, let's say, proof. So you've got to, you've got to, um, and this is a benefit, and I'll tell you why that, what the benefit is. You've got to upload something, some kind of a document, some kind of proof statement, or something like that, into, uh, into, into the vault that's uh, that's 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 contained in the in, in the system. Uh, so at the end of this process, you're going to have what would otherwise be known as a Virtual data room. So, if you've got a potential investor, uh, you're 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 going into into a, a process that where you're going to sell your business. You've already you've already developed your virtual data room. It's all there. This is it. 